In at number 10, we have got the Megalosaurus, and this creature is just so full of great abilities, and compared to maybe something like the Rex or the Spino, this creature really doesn't get as much as I think it deserves to in actually how much damage this creature can do, and what this creature, like, really can do in terms of, like, it can really pack a punch in any kind of battle scenario. This creature does hefty amounts of damage, which most people probably don't even think of, as they just think, well, this thing sleeps in the day, it must be completely useless, and although there is a slight hindrance to that, I still think it is well worth it, because in the night time, these things are so vicious, on, on if, if you're on operation, then you're going to have a pretty easy time with this thing, because obviously, it counts as night time all the time, so you can use it all the time. But still, on every other map, they're really great for boss fights, if you want to do that with them, and they can even grapple small creatures in their mouths, and they're pretty good alpha killers as well. And they're alright at caving as well, maybe they don't fit into quite as many caves as the Baryonyx, but they still do fit into pretty much all of them as you know they're they're quite a decent size and they're pretty decent just like general traveling mounts and really good like it's they're really good at also defeating the dragon actually which is a point which i should add because these things can kill the dimorphodons very easily as they can grapple them in their mouths and it's actually a pretty decent boss strat which i would definitely recommend you doing as long as you have high enough level megalosauruses because you know, the dragon's particularly harsh to some carnivores. Now, some of you may kind of be hating on me a little bit for putting this better than the Megalosaurus. I don't maybe think that this is a better creature than the Megalosaurus. It's just, for what it does, it's it's more useful for the general arc player. But, personally, I would go for Megalosaurus over the Castoroides. It's just, the Castoroides is such an insane gatherer of wood. I have to put it higher because wood is just such an essential resource in arc. And also, you can get using it earlier as well easier to tame because it spawns in a much nicer environment and it's also a pretty good underwater mount as well and you can gather quite significant amounts of energy paste from the beaver dams of this thing but there is the next creature on the list which i think is a significantly better way of getting all of that cementing paste gathered of course and these things also have a smithy as their saddle which you know a portable smithy if you want to repair any of your metal items not really as useful as on the rg but you know it's still a really nice thing to have and i actually remember when this thing came out and then that feature was there and it was actually a pretty cool thing although again like i've said the rg it makes more sense for that creature as it's th this creature is not going to be the one to transport those of metal around next up we have got the bills of bufo and this creature is in my opinion, just so overlooked. Like people don't like they they'll acknowledge this creature. Like they'll they'll look at it and they'll just be like, "Well, it exists." But I'm never gonna use it. Like, what's the point of this thing? I have beaver dams for all of my cementing paste used. Like, I don't need this thing whatsoever. But the fact that this is like it's just it really does have an extremely great use for me because. Obviously, it's a really great cement space gatherer, and until you've used it, you probably won't know actually how good this thing actually is, because you're probably just like, well, beaver dams do it all for me, and I'm going to say they don't. You can gather just so much cementing paste with this creature it's absolutely insane like with the insect cave especially on asa actually as insects don't have levels anymore you can get thousands if not tens of thousands of cementing paste in one run which will probably encumber you but still it, you can really gather just so much of the stuff and it's pretty decent underwater as well which again does play quite a nice big benefit towards it next up we have got the quets in at the number seven spot and this creature is just one of those where i kind of just have to include it like instinctively i feel like people just severely undervalue and overlook the quetzal for what it actually is because it doesn't need to be the fastest flyer out there although maybe you might say it's really boring to just fly around on a slow flyer if you build your base near to a mountain then you're going to be fine and it's no slower than something like a raft is and people use that all of the time and you can gather well not gather but carry so many resources with this creature and when you have a platform saddle on top of it as well you need to have your own portable base there and although maybe it might move slower than you want it to you can still get a heck of a lot of resources across the map in quite a timely fashion compared to some other smaller creatures which will go faster because their weight isn't big enough so you need to take several trips or even some creatures which can but then they're on land and they tend to be a little bit slower and 
obviously you're on land as well you'll be dealing with many other obstacles but when you're in the air you can kind of just go in a straight line so that's why the Quetzal's here. Next up, we've got the Crystal Wyvern, and I feel like people really undervalue this creature. And I know it's an overlooked tier list, but I, I will say undervalued a lot in this, because they're kind of similar of each other. Overlooked is like, to kind of over, well, the, like over skim, skim over something, really, is kind of the, the general definition. And with a creature like this, I think people just devalue it for its tame method compared to the normal Wyvern, because it's so much easier. So therefore, this must be so much worse of a creature. Well, this thing is pretty much, I'm pretty sure actually, it's just the same strength as the Wyvern. And with the Blood Crystal Wyvern, it really does prove an extremely useful one with all the main features of a Wyvern. Just, you get actually a nicer ability. The Blood Crystal Wyvern by far has the nicest ability out of any Wyverns out there. And they also have the Hydration buff, although maybe not the most useful because they're flyers, but you know, you ever stick their feet in a little bit of water or you get those wings to touch water when you're actually flying over a lake you can get that hydration buff which again is going to buff you and you can also use these things in the boss fight of crystal isles so they must be pretty strong to actually like be useful in that fight and they definitely are so you really shouldn't undervalue these things for the tame methods and i know there are a few things which make it a little bit more annoying because the primal crystals a little bit annoying to get and the level 65 like starting level can be a little bit of an annoyance but trust me once you get those things down you're really going to have a good time with these creatures. And at number five, we have got the Megalodon. And in my opinion, this is pretty much my favorite underwater creature to use just for like general combat and all of that. And yes, a Mosasaurus is going to be great and do all of that. But I find that a little bit too big and bulky for me. And the Megalodon is just a sweet spot. And I would say the Basilo is not really an overlooked creature, which is why I haven't included it on, on this list, is it's a really great creature. And obviously it doesn't get hurt by the electric eels and the jellyfish which does play a huge benefit but i feel like people don't give the megalodon enough credit for what it actually deserves because it really is a powerful creature which does have an alpha variant so it means wildcard did definitely care about it when designing it and when arc actually came out this was like one of the only ocean creatures actually in the game at the time and also they deal the bleed ability as well which again does play a huge factor when it comes to the damage dealing of these creatures they can just deal a lot more damage because of that bleed ability which makes them pretty good combat creatures and if you think you're doing the moda on genesis part one as always just tame yourself an x megalodon and you're going to have yourself a blast of a time obviously you're not going to have one you're going to have multiple but i find they kind of do better for that boss fight than modas because they don't get stuck in the the whirlpools as much next up we've got the velonosaur and this creature is essentially a portable turret and i know there are a couple of you out there that just really don't like this creature or value it and you know you can be that person but still for me i really like this creature i f i find its ability is quite cool and inventive for me and it's quite useful to hit creatures for long range and you might think it's a bit gimmicky when you first use it but then i'm at a stage now where i kind of just i really like it and with the arvel on assault and gen 2 you can have an even more powerful version obviously you wouldn't use the kind of spikes are this close but i'm just kind of generally showing you a demonstration and sadly they don't scale when you level up melee damage only the melee attacks but those melee attacks are pretty hefty as well and again with the size of this thing it makes it a pretty decent caving creature as well which you maybe might not expect especially on extinction actually because those caves are really big and you can just quickly get through them obviously you're not going to be doing any of the titans with this creature because it's nowhere near as powerful as something like a Giga or a Carcanosaurus, so it probably doesn't really have too much of a chance against the Titans, but against pretty much everything else in Extinction on, on, on other maps, actually, you can even use it for some boss fights on some other maps, although maybe wouldn't recommend it the most. They really do pack a punch, and they're pretty decent for some PvP scenarios as well, although I'm mainly a PvE player. Next up, in number three, we have got the Baryonyx, and this creature, for my uh, uses, is the go-to caving creature, and I feel like people don't give this creature enough credit for what it actually can do, and just resort to creatures like the Shadow Man because it's uh, the newer creature that's just, like, the better one, supposedly, and I do admit the Shadow Man largely is better than the baryonyx but still that thing is significantly harder to tame than the baryonyx and a lot less accessible as well and i still kind of like to go back to my nostalgia roots which you might think is maybe a little bit crude of me but still when i think of this creature i i think of caving when i think of the shadow main i don't think of caving and i have done some caving with the shadow main it's just 
for me it's not as enjoyable i know that's not really a valid excuse do you just want a really good caving creature but the baryonyx really can do that and again it's really great underwater caves as well you might think well the shadow man is just better underwater caves then because you know it's, it's a really fast swimmer and good in the water well this thing kind of has a slight edge it doesn't have the hydration buff kind of think it should to be honest considering the spino has it and it's kind of spino like i know it doesn't have the, the spine bit but you know it, it, it makes sense but yeah it can stun creatures up to the size of a megalodon like you've seen there so it's a really nice useful ability for it to have now i'm really one for the kano and that's why i put this creature in at the number two spot because this creature is just so overlooked in my opinion people always go for the aloe and yes now on asa the aloe and the kano are pretty much as easy to tame as each other because of the new baby like taming methods thing but still the kano in my opinion is just the more preferable creature to me because it's smaller still deals a lot of bleed damage obviously it's the bleed damage is the same regardless of what creature but it just it deals the bleed damage like the allosaurus and although maybe it doesn't have the pack buff and all of that and it isn't quite as powerful a creature i still think it's smaller size it really just nets it as the the better creature for me and also the level that it's unlocked i know they're still quite similar but i still think this is kind of this is kind of my goal for first carnival in arc and i feel like people overlook this creature for something maybe better that you might want to use instead and you you can obviously go for those creatures as well but again i know it kind of comes back to nostalgia a little bit but i i do feel quite nostalgic for this creature they're just they're some of the first carnivores that i ever tamed and i still really like using them and obviously they did have their, their tlc's and all of that stuff so they are a lot better now than they used to be but still i think people just really overlook them and don't use them as much as i think they should be used as they are really good creatures to use they're really easy to control and they deal that bleed damage again so they really do pack a punch in 2024 so i don't really get why too many people aren't using them unless everyone's just for some reason going for the aloes every single time which you know you could say is quite valid and it mainly just depends on personal preference for that at least in my opinion it, it kind of depends what you want more of a carnivore do you want like a smaller carnivore a larger carnivore what kind of mobility you want and, and all of that damage and health you probably just want the highest but yep the carnivore's in at number two and in at number one we have got the blood stalker and maybe necessarily i don't think this creature's overlooked but the reason why i've actually put it in at number one spot is what i use it for i think people overlook it for which is why i've put it in at this spot and in my opinion the bloodstalker is the best underwater creature out there with no exceptions to the rule it is just miles ahead of any other creature which you know maybe might have some slight competition against it like maybe the basilo or the fastenosuchus when that thing actually comes out i'll make my opinion on that actually when it releases when scorched earth comes out of course and also like creatures like the shadow mane and all of that you, you might say they compete with it but the bloodstalker is just it's so versatile in all it can do it can glide across the top of the water again the main wing can as well but in the water it's really fast and agile you can also seal the creatures so it's kind of like having an awesome spyglass mod but you don't actually need the mod and you can see the aggros of creatures so you can actually see if creatures are aggroed onto you if you need to get away from them instead of just staring at them and seeing what they do next you can see if they're aggro to you they actually use you when creatures aggro they'll either attack you or just run away for some reason don't know why that really happens but you know i get it happens when you get them to high torpor but even if they don't have high torpor sometimes the creatures will do that rki is a little bit weird to be fair but yeah the bloodstalker in my opinion is the best underwater travel mount and i think it's really overlooked for that and it's just seen as a good like traveling mount and it's good for getting hex skins on gen 1 because you know those are missions that use it and it's a useful creature to learn but i don't think enough people use it for those underwater abilities which i really personally love this creature for in at number 10 we have the chalic ethereum and in my opinion this creature really does have to just make this list because like when you look at it and it's taming methods and kind of how useful this creature is but also how much more useful this creature could be if it did get a tlc it really makes me feel like this creature is in in dire need of one maybe a slight change in the tame method would be sufficient maybe don't make it just a normal knockout tame but maybe have some kind of uh, different feeding material for a passive tame to make it more accessible to actually tame because getting that beer is certainly something but you know 
maybe that it gives the creature some sort of character to just its general identity so maybe that that one go ahead and that's fine but if it has just some general quality of life improvements and actually for me it is mainly the tame method when coming back to it if i added more accessible tame method if it's rocks maybe did some more damage and were slightly more aimable that's probably just my part that could be useful and maybe if it had some uh, maybe like an extra special ability or something like that it could really bring this creature together and i'm actually keen to hear what you think your ideas should be for these creatures and what tlc's they should actually get next up we have got the basilisk and i feel like this is such a cool creature when you think of it but when you actually maybe use it in practice it doesn't really hype up to everything and Partly I think it should have some better mobility overall, maybe some extra abilities on top of what it already has, maybe allow it to deal more damage. I think the tone method is fine, it makes sense. It's a little bit irritating, but considering what kind of creature this is, you would probably expect that. I'm fine with it. If they did want to change it in future with a TLC, that'd be fine, but that's not usually what TLCs are about. It'd be adding some extra special abilities and like more maybe utilizing that underground ability even further and maybe like an ability to send shock waves and knock back creatures under the ground and like leap up under them and just demolish them. You could definitely use some really cool features with that as well, which aren't currently in the game now next up we've got the giga and i feel like it's a time at this point where this creature needs some sort of tlc and maybe it's not in the most dire need but i really feel like compared to the cockroach and saurus and other creatures like that it is it's very far behind in just what this creature is and what its abilities are like and yeah i know it's a lot easier to tame than the cockroach and saurus in most cases it's in some ways a lot more resource intensive because you need all of those trank arrows but it's not as laborious of a method and less things can kind of go wrong in the taming of this thing but i still think it, it's quite dated in how it works as a creature compared to something like Harkadon so i'm not saying like make it exactly like that creature but maybe if it had the stats of like a wild giga maybe you'd still keep that rage buff if necessary otherwise remove that as you know it's it's quite a big hindrance and the cockroach doesn't have that and i know i'm relating it a lot to that creature but art is a different game now than what it was in 2016 so this creature it has a lot of dated things about it which is why i'm putting it on this list i'm not saying like maybe it's in the most dying need of tlc but i really do think wildcard should give the giga at some point a, a reconsider over because it's such an influential arc tame and i think it deserves something in at number seven we have got the carb enemies and i i put this thing here as i think it could be a really useful starter tame it kind of already is but it could be even better if it had just a little tlc and maybe increase its movement a little bit give it some special abilities possibly some kind of spinning attack that could stun some enemies underwater maybe give it some better gathering features possibly something like that uh, you could even maybe give it the pack buff in a pack i know it's not really the most useful thing again very keen to hear your ideas on what tlc's you think these creatures should get and what actually other creatures which i haven't put on this list what which you think you need tlc um should actually have personally for me if it had some kind of special attack on top of it it's saddle it's is fine not like it yeah the cementing pace is a little bit of a hindrance you could make that a little bit cheaper but it kind of makes sense it is a good underwater creature i'd say maybe boost its speed a little bit add maybe more of an essence of damage maybe make these things better turret so because there are just so many good opportunities with this creature which i think wildcard kind of misses out on and I, I feel like it's a, it could be a really high step of a level over where the parasol was and the stego is such a different creature now to what it was before it had that tlc and if the carb enemies could go under similar treatment maybe if not as op as the stego it, it could be a really useful thing for the carb enemies to have and i personally think it's it's quite underrated and people don't give it enough credit and if i had that tlc then maybe it would bring this creature to some new heights next up we've got the angler the king of uh, harvesting any kinds of silica pearls but personally i think it can be used and remembered for a lot more than that it can be just a really great agile 
maybe higher damage dealing creature with some other wealth of abilities and maybe it could do something with obviously the main thing that defines an anglerfish which is the the light on the front of it and it, it could possibly do something but you, i'm not actually sure how much it illuminates but if it would be kind of useful if you could really use it to illuminate your way in the night that would be quite nice if it had some kind of basic saddle and armor that would boost it up another level and some more special abilities because all it can really do is attack and just gather some silica pearls and i feel like you can be really inventive with this creature and its design although yes maybe it's not the most dinosaur like creature i still think there's a lot that can be done to this creature to improve it in everything that it, it stands for instead of just being a good silica pole gatherer and just your generic basic ocean tame and at number five we got the packy and this creature really just has to be here for me on this list and it's kind of sad looking at this because it's so so useless but with just a few simple changes it could be a much better creature firstly if it could gather berries that would put this thing at significantly better heights for general use also if it I think the mobility of this creature is fine. Its its special attack could be utilized in a better fashion if you had more mobility when it was actually charging because it's not particularly OP. If it deals a little bit more torpor, that could be nice. If its same method wasn't so long and laborious, that would make this creature a, a more defined, useful one. And if it had some maybe special harvesting abilities or some kind of buff it gave other creatures or something, something small like that, like a buff, and obviously the ability to gather berries and just a tame method that isn't as difficult then it could really boost this creature in terms of its abilities and where it actually is in the game because you can just get a parasol and that creature is going to do so much more good and it took absolutely ages to kill this raptor personally i do think these things should deal a little bit more damage just to the general creatures possibly because they are quite heavily armored creatures it would make sense next up we've got the archaeopteryx but i'm also going to put the galley in a similar spot as well as i think the galley is just lacking in the health department and a, a bit of damage as well although it doesn't really need that and some weights definitely that could drastically improve that creature and again maybe a special ability of sorts maybe like an extra dash but talking about the archaeopteryx since the glide suit uh, came out and the cinema crops after that as well this creature is pretty much just useless and it's just an old version of those two things if you could use this thing like a cinema crops though and it's sort of an alternative to that creature on other maps as the cinema crops isn't on every map then it could really boost this creature it could just be a a better use of a creature you can still use it like a hang glider but then you wouldn't have to carry it it could just go on your back normally and yeah that there's there's a, a few things that you can do with this creature which can turn it from something completely useless to something like the cinema crops at number three we've got the megaloceros and the female version of course not the male one that's a good thatch gatherer personally i think yeah maybe this is only really used for breeding just megaloceroses but you could at least do something with this creature it can't even attack it has no attack whatsoever this this is in dire need of some sort of tlc to actually be a useful creature apart from that one use which isn't even really utilizing this creature it's just essentially using it as a placeholder to make baby megaloceroses and then if you get female babies out of that it's not good you only want the male babies out of it to get good thatch gatherers and whatever you use general male megaloceroses for the female one it's just yeah maybe it doesn't have all the horns and all that but i still think it should have some sort of edge which would be like why you tame this creature apart from just oh i want to breed some megaloceroses so i'm going to get both of these and i know generally most art creatures don't have distinction between both genders of creatures and considering this one does i feel like wildcard could do something with this creature to really highlight those differences and you'd have different uses for both instead of this one just being like utterly useless and obsolete next up we've got the microraptor and the reason why i'm putting it so high on the list isn't necessarily because i think it needs the most amount of tlc but i think its ability is quite a cool and interesting one and if utilized properly it could really make this a good sidekick again if you just have this just like maybe on your back or on your shoulder i think you can actually put this thing on your shoulder but if you have it on your back like a cinema crops or an, another creature i'm just trying to think that i think the seeker is whatever it's called has that same sort of ability actually though i think that's in a mod but 
Still, if it had that, and then you could just send it on riders, and then it would come back back onto you, so you could knock people off their riders, and then it would come back to your back. That that could just be a really cool, simple ability for this creature to have. And in at number one is the Aranio, and there are so many things that you can do cool with spiders, and I'm kind of going to put the Onic here as well, although maybe if you turn the Onic into something more like the Desmodus, but maybe a slightly dumbed down version that was easier to tame, that could be very useful because that creature is pretty much obsolete. Um, with this creature though, the Aranio, it had the ability to climb up walls, something simple like that, and it actually dealt some reasonable amount of damage and had some decent health and all things like that, then it wouldn't just be a sort of placeholder obsolete creature which you would only tame if you wanted to tame every creature on arc and it's actually just a generally huge pain to tame this creature so i'd recommend a slight change in that taming method and if you could do that and make this sort of like the bloodstalker but have some distinction it could be a really great creature but anyway that is the end of today's video and i want to know from you what creatures do you think need tlc and what tlc ideas do you have for these creatures as always comment down below if you agree with this list if not put your 10 down in the comments below and with that i'll see you all later